welcome to All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. Today is December 17th, and we will be discussing uh, asexuals and aromanticism. Mm. <laughs> Close, enough. Close enough. My name is Jill Caserta. I use the them pronouns, and to my left is. My name is Naven. I use he, him pronouns. My name is Oliver. I use he, him, they, them pronouns. Uh, my name is Piper. I use he, him, they, them pronouns. So, for those who don't know, what is asexual and what is aromantic? Okay, so asexual means having little to no sexual attraction, so that as well as aromanticism falls on a spectrum, so you could be completely asexual with absolutely no sexual attraction, or you could feel it some of the time, or once you develop a bond with someone, and um, for aromanticism, it's the same way, so you could be completely aromantic and feeling no romantic attraction, or you could fall anywhere on that spectrum. Okay, so that's romantic and sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. Are there more? Yes, there are. There, <laughs> there's sexual attraction, romantic attraction, aesthetic, sensual, and platonic. Okay, so what is aesthetic attraction? Aesthetic attraction is basically you can look at a person and be like, wow, they're like cute or handsome, and that's basically it. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to um, be connected to any other kinds of attraction. Mm -hmm. And. Piper, what is sexual attraction? Sensual? Sexual. Oh, oh, um, <laughs> well, it is when you have a desire, or you have an attraction towards someone, and it's obviously sexual, I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's, it's like you want to have sex with them, I Yeah, guess. in the most technical term, <laughs> yeah. you just want to have sex with them. I, that was surprising. We have three aces trying to describe <laughs> sexual attraction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's also platonic, so yeah. What is that? Because I don't even know that one. <laughs> platonic attraction just means pretty much you just like want to be friends with someone. Um, that can go along with other types of attraction. All these types of attraction, they can you can like feel multiple at once, or you can feel them completely individually, or all of them together. But um, platonic attraction just means you want to be friends with someone. Mm -hmm. And because I also don't know how to define this, what is sensual? Sensual attraction. It's like you like to touch them. That was creepy. That was. I know. Um, so sensual attraction is basically um, you want to hug someone or cuddle with them or like it can kind of entail kissing to a certain extent, but it's not always. Mm -hmm. Romantic attraction. This is the one I know because <laughs> I can actually feel it. Um, so romantic attraction is okay. It can. It's almost like a combination of a lot of the attractions, like. It's essentially just like you want to be in a, a romantic relationship with them. You want to date that person. You want to, you, it's, oh, oh gosh. You, it's like a, a bunch of things wrapped up into one. So whatever you consider romantic, that is what it is. So what do you consider romantic then? I mean, like, for me, nothing, because I'm <laughs> romantic. <laughs> for literally nothing I do, I would possibly ever consider romantic, because it's not... That's so you don't. It's, it's just very individual. So you don't consider kissing romantic, then, do you? No, that's strange because I do. Yeah, like that's not sexual to me at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it kind of. I don't really know. It kind of depends what, like, sort of kissing, I guess, for lack of better <laughs> terms. I can't. Can you think of a better way to phrase that? Nope. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. You don't know. It's just. Yeah, I don't really it's know. Just depends on the relationship, I suppose. Yeah, I, I'm just kind of like. Um, I don't really understand romantic attraction, so I, like same with Oliver, like I don't really see anything so it's as just me. It's just romantic. You. Yeah, I'm the only one. <laughs> or it's like I, I can like some things I see as as could be platonic or romantic, but ever, but everyone's like, no, that's just it's romantic. Cl they're clearly flirting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I think all of the attractions are super individual, mm -hmm. and people definitely have different like thoughts about how they define their own like experiences and feelings in terms of types of attraction and obviously mm -hmm. you don't have to label them at all either. Mm -hmm. So moving on from that, because I actually forgot to do something in the intro, because I'm really smart. <laughs> you identify as aromantic, asexual, what do you identify as? Um, I identify as asexual. I'm not really sure about my romantic orientation, and at this point, like, I've been questioning it for so long that it doesn't really matter anymore, so... <laughs> <laughs> so I just say I'm, um, aromantic. So, yeah. All right, so you're Aaron Mason. Is that how yeah. you say it? Yes. All right. 
I am on the asexual spectrum. I've also I've also been questioning things for so long. It's kind of a blurred mess. <laughs> I don't want to have sex. <laughs> Um, that's all you need to know. That's all I'm, you need to know. <laughs> I'm aromantic, and I guess sexuality, I usually just call myself gay because that can mean anything, but also, like, it's just easier. So. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely asexual. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> aromantic, I know I fall on the spectrum somewhere. Definitely gray, gray romantic. Um, so, and how old were you when you like knew, like, or when like when you started still, to question things? Like, literally, just like five, six months ago. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah, whoa. And I, I don't know. Yeah, it's been a while. I don't know. I didn't realize it was a thing, which is why I was like, oh, this because is just it who needs I am. To be in more media. Yeah, huh? we'll get. <laughs> I didn't say anything. What? <laughs> Oof. But yeah. What about you? For like ages and. All um, that. I just think, like coming to terms with it. Yeah, I think I. I think I found the right label, probably, like, seven months ago. So you both um, of you fairly recently then. Yeah, and maybe a little longer ago than that. But I was before that, like, questioning whether I was somewhere on that spectrum or I remember that just like I remember that stage <laughs> I was there <laughs> or just like thinking about um different labels I can use and like what I'm comfortable with mm -hmm. and that kind of thing I was probably thinking about that for like five months before that so I don't know like I've been thinking mm -hmm. about it for around a year or so mm -hmm. for me it only really came about when like people around me started like talking about sex and all of that as like people started to age it was like what have you done so far and, like that's weird first of all they're asking that question <laughs> and second of all like just i was thinking about it and i was like i don't want to do any like when you're a kid it's not really something that's brought up like when i'm five i don't care i don't, I don't even know what it is whereas like when it as i got as i got older i was like uh, no what and then i was like oh that makes a lot of sense <laughs> Um, like, when did I know, or when did when I... When did you, like, start questioning it? When did you, like, actually figure it out? Um, I kind of always knew I was, like, different, I guess. That sounds really <laughs> cliche. That sounds me. bad. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate Gladly. that so much. No, um, I kind of figured it out, like, so, oh, Jesus, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm gonna say like eight months ago, but it was probably sooner than that. I'm really not sure. Mm -hmm. So within the past year. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, that's close enough. Yeah, so we've all kind of figured it out within the past yeah. year. I f yeah, it was a while ago. It was probably like a year ago. It doesn't really matter. It was a while ago. <laughs> so and another like for me, it was really difficult because I was like, how do I know if I had never actually had sex? Which is the question I've been asked a lot. How do you know if you're ace if you never had sex? Mm -hmm. oh, Answer it. <laughs> oh, so, well, first off, you don't really like ask a, like a gay man like how do you know you're gay if you've never had sex with a man, and like especially if um, I mean, if you could you, you could annoying. but that's weird and yeah. none of your business and not it's not a requirement to like have sex to know your sexual orientation. It's just because also it's about like attraction like it's about yeah. whether you can like know someone or look at someone and mm -hmm. like be attracted to them in whatever way like it doesn't necessarily have to correlate with your experience yeah like attraction is an action like you can still have sex but not like be attracted to that person se sexually and yeah. doesn't, it doesn't necessarily even mean it's an unpleasant experience it's just like you're not attracted to that person because yeah or you can still be aroused a lot of the time yeah. just like you don't really necessarily want to when you don't have that like desire yeah it's yeah it's like the feeling can be there but you don't really want to act on it or feel it's necessary to act on it so a lot Sometimes. of aces do actually have sex maybe they're in a relationship with someone who is an ace and they want to do it for their partner or they just it or just feel like nice. not not in like yeah. not in a weird way not in a like a, not in a weird way <laughs> not, not in a bad way but yeah. or maybe it just just feel nice for them because yeah. they can basically feel that stuff yeah we have working genitals most of us. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I kind of, we kind of touched on it, like the stigma of like not of being, knowing this so young. 
did you guys face that with coming out as Arrow or anything? Like, is there stigma of knowing you're Arrow so young? I mean, probably, but there's... You haven't, you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it because most people, like, I only mention it to people if I'm, like, with a group of people where I know they'll understand what it means or if someone asks me a question that's, like, uncomfortable and I have to explain to them, like, well, I'm a romantic and that means this, and then they're like, okay. <laughs> and so I don't really get, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, questions like that at all because people just don't know what it is so they're just like okay whatever or they just ask something that's like completely unrelated so i don't think there's enough like education or awareness about it to like what about like have stereotypes being asked, like you like say you'd never want to get like married and then it's like yeah. a pushback with that perspective like saying that yeah or, like you will eventually because i always yeah. i got that too with being ace like you'll find the right person mm-hmm. and eventually you'll want to screw them and i'm like no i won't yeah I no i have people who are like like even classmates who are my age when I'm having conversation so with weird. like my queer classmates about aromanticism and some other person is just like questioning what we're talking about and is like well you'll probably want to get married someday like you can't decide when you're 14 like probably a lot of people don't want to get married when they're 14 and that's not the point so I don't think people understand like it's not necessarily about like very specific things like I'm sure there are people who feel romantic attraction who don't want to get married but that's not the same thing as just like not feeling romantic and attraction the at problem all. is that sometimes that's true like my mom can, like reminds me a lot that like when she was younger she didn't want to get married yeah no that's definitely because yeah. you couldn't but it's, be but it's for that marriage reasons. at 14 yeah honestly what I don't know I don't I don't know um I forgot what I was about to say but okay and Another question for all the arrows, so it's actually just not me. What did, did you guys have to come out as arrow, or and if you did, like, what was that like? <laughs> Whoa, I, I was not ready for I'm that. Just like turn to you, because yeah. I'm like really curious about this. Um, because I don't understand. I don't. I didn't. I never. My parents never really. I don't know. Never gave me any. Weird, maybe my mom was like, "Okay, honey, like, you, <laughs> you, know, you do you." Yeah, have she's some like, dinner. you know what? Just go live a good life. That's pretty much what my parents... I don't even want to know what my dad would say. I don't know what his reaction would be, but I know he's probably just like, okay. So nothing really. <laughs> Did you have to come out? Or was it kind of like just like... Um, you like drop it in college? <laughs> that's how why I came out. Yeah. I came out as trans and then like went through like a few months or so where I was like changing labels and figuring stuff out and I think like everyone goes through that especially after coming out when like now you can talk to people about it without them being like hmm this is suspicious so like I was having the time when I was having like those kind of conversations and figuring that out so I think I changed my labels like a few different times and my parents pretty much didn't care because I told them what they needed to know which is like I'm trans here my pronouns like here's a basic ep- explanation of my gender, like, there you go. And then if I mention other stuff in conversation, they're just like, okay, whatever. Like, I don't know. They probably yeah. don't understand what it means. They can like, I seriously doubt they know what's happening. But Do parents that's ever fine. know what's happening? But also, like, <laughs> other, I, I have, like, other family members and friends who know what that means, and so mm-hmm. I didn't, I wouldn't say I came out. But you, do you, but like I, I would just mention it because yeah. I feel like it's a big deal. So I don't know. The, I kind of did the same out thing. Seems dramatic. <laughs> I kind of did the same thing. We didn't like come out, but I like purposely dropped it into conversation. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like, just so I could be like, hey, this is a thing. I got like a weird look occasionally, and then it was just kind of like, whatever. It's just Jules talking about more gay stuff. <laughs> I was like, yep, you're doing great. <laughs> best, best reaction. <laughs> about you. I'm just gonna go in a line. It's basically what we're doing. That's good. Um, I never really um, sat my mom down and was like, I have something important to talk to you about, <laughs> like you always see in movies. No, I've never that's seen that. what happened. I've never yeah, heard that actually happen. Yeah, that's never, it's it's always like, hey, by the way. And like casually tacked on to the end of a sentence, like, here. <laughs> yeah, so my mom didn't understand it at first, and um, at first she um, was like, oh, everyone feels that sometimes, and like you're young and stuff. And she's gotten better, which is good, but... Um, yeah, I never really like came out to her. And I'm not out to my dad, but 
I know he knows what it is because he watches a show with a character in it who's ace who also explained aromanticism at some point. Is it good? Like, is it good representation? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like, I've seen clips. It's like, actually, actually, like, accurate representation. It's pretty good. <laughs> I haven't seen the show, though. But, um, so I know my dad would know, and he'd probably be fine with it. He might be like, oh, you're young or whatever. But I doubt he'd be like, you know, and can I swear? <laughs> you can lightly swear. Uh, he probably wouldn't be a jackass about it, so. That's fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's not a lot of, like, aggressive response. And this probably, like, I'm not trying to speak to everyone's experience, experiences. Yeah. But, like, in my experience, I've never, like, personally experienced or known someone who's experienced, like, an aggressive reaction mm -hmm. or a super strong reaction to coming out as somewhere on the airway spectrum because there's always people, internet trolls. Like, people just don't understand and they, they're not mad about it because they just think you're like no. completely making stuff up. So they're like, okay, whatever. And they're not gonna be mad about it at all. But also, wouldn't it be like a little strange coming out as ace and your parents like are suddenly like really concerned about your, like, like are just like asking, like having pushback on against your, like your sex life. Like it'd be weird to have my parents like start being like, well eventually you'll have, like that's just weird to me. It like why do you care? As long as I'm being safe, cause I'm, be I'm being super safe cause I'm actually doing it. What's the issue? Yeah, I think my mom also knows I'm ace. Like I've, I've t I talked to her about a lot of this stuff and so she didn't- So your mom knows, but your dad doesn't know anything. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah, Perfect. I don't have like a like a reason to come out to him. Like I'll I'll tell him at some point. Have a really good reason to come out. Yeah, so my mom no is more accepting of the fact that I'm ace because she's just like, okay, some people don't have sex. I don't think she can really exactly wrap her head Does around. Think the it's like abstinence or something. Um, no, I think she um, I think she un has a hold on a um, asexuality. Um, but I think she can't like completely wrap her head around aromanticism and stuff like that. So. Yeah. A lot of people find it more confusing, and I... I find it more confusing. I guess, I feel like maybe that has something to do with how broad the definition of, like, romance can be. Because it's, it's so individual. Like romantic attraction. Yeah. Because it's so individual, and also, like, I've never... Like, it's so impossible for people to explain. Like, mm -hmm. I don't... Everyone has a different definition, and also it's something that's, like... I don't think it's easy to explain unless you have personal experience. So like you were trying to explain a romanticism to me. Yeah, and, and it was like blowing my mind the whole time because I was like, what? Because I don't well, understand. Yeah. I still don't. Probably will never will to be honest. <laughs> just whoa. Yeah, I was just sitting there freaking out most of the time, wasn't I? <laughs> so. Do, do you need help? Yeah, I need help. Please help me. What do you need help with? Anything to like make a conversation. Oh lord. Um, <laughs> are you going down the list or like, are you just jumping around? Cause oh lord. This is gonna be. No, so it's editing. it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's gonna be so bad. Um. Okay. What are some stereotypes you've faced? Thank you. You're okay. welcome. <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed to leave this. Okay. I there are a lot of stereotypes for. Like, yes. for asexual, there's, like, the quiet kid that doesn't talk to anyone. It's not, I think it's <laughs> Which not, not so much, like, stereotypes, like, everywhere, because it's, like, so not well-known, but there's definitely stereotypes within the, people who know within the yeah. LGBTQ community. I know there are definitely some for Arrow. Yeah. Which is, like, unfeeling monsters. Yeah, which or is, like, like... predators. Which is horrible. Yeah. The predator thing is, like... It's sweet. Well, people think that, like, people who are aromantic and asexual are just, like have no feelings and don't know what they're talking about and like don't have a personality, which is like hey. a lot. But then <laughs> I'm kidding, there's I also you. like- I love you too. I don't know. It's like so completely inaccurate and yeah. like horrible. Yeah. Like, have you met anyone? They probably don't know. Like, there's just like so many like trolls in the community that just yeah. really love to hate Ace and Arrow people. Yeah, but like try to just shove them out of the community too, which is like why? Yeah, cause like, there's the whole like cishet aces and um, cisgender hetero romantic aces and cisgender heterosexual arrows can't be LGBT and like they can that's fine it's it's yeah but did you have you like faced any stereotypes yourself oh myself like in like in, outside of the online community um no not really but I've definitely been like kind of hesitant to tell people. Mm -hmm. Because I know it can be like met with a lot of backlash. Like people like 
usually don't have like the courage to do it in person. My lips just made a weird noise. <laughs> so yeah, people usually won't say it to your face, which is why they're on the internet. But um, yeah. Yeah. It's always the internet. I mean, Lovely. there's definitely like. Also not a good thing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I feel like most of what I've experienced in terms of like stereotypes is honestly just people not believing it's real or just being yeah. super hesitant to accept that it's like genuinely a feeling and people something that exists yeah. rather than just like a preference or something. They also have so, a hard time like separating romantic and sexual together. Yeah, they, yeah, like they really think they go together and it's like mm, they don't. They don't have to. They can, but they don't have to. So like if I have like sometimes my um, like cisgender heterosexual friends um, the one like, cisgender heterosexual the friend. The one. There's, one. There's like cis hat friend. Or just like, just like people who aren't aromantic and whose sexual Sorry. identity and romantic identity align, can just have a hard time understanding what I'm talking about. So if I'm like I'm aromantic, that means I don't, like I'm not interested in like these things. And then they sort of ask me like, does that mean that, like you're fine with like, this or this or don't these two things always have to go together? Like, can't you not do that? like separately and doesn't it always have to line up and so I think people just struggle with that but I've also found that like a lot of people um, will learn based on like just more conversations about it and like talking about specific feelings or just talking about like what you are comfortable with and like what your relationships look like and people understand. Yeah. So you're talking a little bit about the online community, and with Arrow, I occasionally venture into like the Arrow Ace thing, and I'm like, I don't, whoa, I gotta leave. Because <laughs> just no one. Wait, do you mean like the bad, the, the bad part of it? Oh, like, like I can, like, I occasionally see it. And I'm like, like the people who are like, Aces we shouldn't be should a part die. of the community. Yeah, that's you should. That's called um, Ace discourse, and it's not a lot of fun. It's basically just. People. Why do you know so many big words? Because I follow a lot of hey, Jules, accounts. What? Did you check out that account I sent I you? I did. There you go. It just made me laugh. Okay. In a good way. In a good way. That's what I mean. In a good way. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. So, can you repeat your question, please? <laughs> With the online community, do. You I normally just saw, like, I didn't see a lot of bad stuff, just normally the Asian shouldn't be about the community. Have you seen a lot of bad stuff there? Uh, and what is it? Yeah, I have. So the thing is, I follow, like, not just Ace and Arrow accounts, I follow other LGBT accounts. And, the, and like, every now and then you'll get someone on that account who posts something, like, really controversial about Aces. And then, like, the comments will just go crazy. Are we that controversial? Yeah. Really? <laughs> it's it's really annoying because like it's, it's controversial. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I don't know. The main argument I see is like our oppressors are trying to force their way into the community, and it's and it's you also like and it's, what? And, and as far as oppressors, they mean like cisgender and either heteroromantic or heterosexual people are trying to force their way into the community. It's like and, no, they're already part. Of it. They, yeah, they're and, already there. And it's also like a lot of um arrows and aces like if they if they do experience attraction either romantic or sexual or like something else it's like usually not like straight or like to the it opposite can, gender it can you be. don't see it a lot. yeah i don't see it a lot it's like it's Maybe often like there, honestly like it's there and like that's totally fine it's just i don't see a lot of it so like yeah. where are these people like i don't know where these people are coming from like every single ace person is hetero romantic. I don't know where that's coming from. Clearly there's, not. There's yeah. also um, a lot about like the expectation that all um, arrow people are also ace and that all ace people mm -hmm. are also arrow, yeah. which can also be damaging. Yeah, some people are confused that I'm in a romantic relationship, but yeah. like there's no sex involved. Yeah. And I honestly, it's pretty like, it's still fairly easy for me because of my age. Or yeah. it's like it's not expected. It's like super accepted. It's, it's not expe expected. Not accepted. It's not super expected to be having sex at fourteen. Yeah. So I can still kind of like skirt under like my age and like use that. But like I feel like when I'm getting older, it'll, uh, anyone who's older, it's like harder to like explain that there's no sex involved in this relationship. Yeah. Or if you and just boggles their mind, like what you don't have sex. People don't understand if you make like very assured statements about your future if I'm like I don't want to get married mm -hmm. then people start to question it like if I'm like I don't really know if I want to get married in the future like I'm not interested in that right now people are like okay whatever you're 14 like no one really cares but if I say something really like sure because I am then <laughs> people get confused because 
or like why like why are you so sure right now mm -hmm. and I personally I never like I never try to, I always try to avoid making like those really like sure mm -hmm. statements because I'm not sure yeah eventually That's I fair. could like there's still the possibility of me having second length sexual attraction is still there because like everything it's fluid yeah which is I mean, yeah. it's gonna drill into your head like everything it's fluid I don't the problem is that like no matter what I say say even if it's like a sure statement or it's, it's like a possibility for change it's like still gonna be doubted yeah <laughs> or or if it's if or if I say it in like an unsure way it's it's automatically like yeah disregarded kind yeah, of yeah disregarded or like yeah you're definitely gonna want kids when you grow up that's been a big one for me <laughs> I hate that so much I don't yeah, hate I don't I hate think, kids I just don't want I'm assuming kids. you don't want kids but I, I don't want kids no oh, I want kids. I think that if yeah like if you make a that's really if you make a statement that's closer to what you actually feel and you say something about like I'm not really sure what I want in the future but here's what I feel right now so please don't ask me these questions or expect this from me then people are gonna question what you're talking about and be like well that's probably not true you're definitely gonna change your mind in the future so I think that's what leads people to making super like bold statements about like I'm never going to do these things so and that's don't probably like, where the like stereotypes you're... about like you have no feelings and you're being too harsh come yeah. from. It feels like you're not going to be taken seriously. Yeah, though. you have to like, like also, defend yeah. yourself. I feel like people would not be like, you have no feelings if they learned about the diff if they didn't just think it's only romantic and sexual. Yeah, if people knew because, about like, attraction. Because can you, you can still feel aesthetic attraction, right? Yeah, and like I can, can feel, you feel any type of attraction that's not romantic. Like yeah. that's all that So that's means. feeling. <laughs> yeah, and so we will just don't um, understand. So I have a question for you guys. Being ace or arrow in schools, because for me, it's like, a, I'm always being asked, like, what have you done? And people are, like, talking about it in class. Why do like, people ask people why like, why is it coming up in class? Why is it coming up in class, first of all? Question. I'm just trying to do my math work. Leave me alone. But it's like, it comes up, and it's like, how far have you gone? And I'm like, no. Wait, what? <laughs> I, no, it's completely stupid. I hate, like, kids will walk up. So, who are you crushing on? So, <laughs> that's, just a, that's just a huge thing. Okay. Who are you crushing on? And Nobody. What act have you done what? sexually? I don't want to say it because it's... Like, why do you bad. care? It's so disgusting, but also, like, the reactions you get out of it. And you have no idea how many times I've tried to explain it to somebody. And it just, like, they're like, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Over their head. <laughs> Woo! Gone. And then the next day, it's like, so... <laughs> we need to crush it on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> did you ever do a thing where you just randomly choose a person? Yes. Because I did that. Oh. Just so would leave me alone. I'd be like, that guy. And then be like, oh, what are you going to do about it? And I'm like, if you'll make Nothing. you shut up, I'll hug them. <laughs> Like, does that work for you? Yeah. Because it's a hug. Yeah, the thing about that is, like, I would do that, too. I would just pick out a question. It's like, that's a fairly attractive guy who's not too much of a jackass. I'm going to get them kind of straight, too. <laughs> Ooh, that was fun times. But, um, and then you're straight. Yep. So I would do that, and then, um, but then they're like, what are you going to do about it? And it's like, is it, like, a general assumption that you're going to act on your crush? Like, No. I'm too awkward wait, is, for that. Is it? No, but, like... I think it is. I, I people think, think that's a thing. I think apparently I don't, wait, when you I don't crush on someone, <laughs> you have to do something. But it's like, first off, you can just like enjoy that feeling. Yeah, like, it's like, not you necessarily like negative to have a crush on someone and not like be in a relationship. Like you should just be able to enjoy that feeling without everyone being like, get in a relationship yeah, I think now. People are always painted as like, if you have like attraction to someone and you don't like do anything about it, then it's like, oh, you're so like desperate inside and you need to like work up some self-confidence and have the courage to talk to them. It's like, what if I just don't care? Like, has that crossed your mind? What if, what if, if, really go what if I just like looking at them? Yeah. <laughs> that, <is attraction. laughs> that sounds creepy, but like, you know what I but mean. But also like, I, I feel like, like you were talking about earlier when people just don't listen or when you tell them like, that's none of your business or like, no, I'm not interested in any of these things, or I haven't done any of these things. I also get people who reassure me when I'm like, when they're like, have you done this or this or this? And yeah. I'm like, no, I, like, no. You'll get then there someday. Then they're like, oh, you'll get there someday. You're like, oh, it's okay. You know, <laughs> not, weird. Not, <laughs> Why do these 14 year olds care about my sex life? I don't know, it's just, I don't and know it's, you. It's, it, yeah, it's always people I don't know very well. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because my friends would never ask me that crap. Yeah, because they know, but well, they it's know. also like, and, like, if they strange. do, they do it, like, better than just, like, have you given up a job? I don't know. It's also... It's, like, the weirdest thing. Yeah, exa that's, that's the exact question that I have been asked. It's so many times. It's so gross. I hate how that's just, like, a normal thing that mm. people apparently talk, talk about. Like, okay, I... Why... 
-hmm. Okay, so I have a question for you two. Yeah? Are there such thing as platonic crushes? Absolutely. What are they called? Squish. It's squish? called a squish, squish, yeah. I love that! I know, it's great. It's so cute! Yeah. Do you know that Santa's squishy? <laughs> so is it just like you definitely want to be friends with them? Yeah, it's like, basically, the way I look at it is you want to be friends with someone, but be, with someone, but usually for the reasons you want to be in a romantic relationship with them, but not necessarily. So is it like queer platonic? No. Um, no. Maybe. No? It, I'm really confused. I mean, it's, it's like, it's like, like platonic is... A, like, wait, can I, before yeah, we get go. into this, can I just say one more thing? Yeah. So I've been having, so like, I love my friends and. Thank you. Yeah, and I tell them that a lot. I love you too. I love you too. And, and like, I'll, and I'll be talking about my friends to someone else and I'll be like, yeah, so and so, they're great, I love them. They and, think you have a crush on them. Yeah, then. and it's like, you'll, I'll just be talking about them and it's like, so, do you have a crush on them? And it's just like, I'm not gonna clap really loudly, but it's just like, like where did that come from? It's just like oh, I, you hit a wall, and it's like I asked what? my mom to drive me to go hang out with someone, and they were like, "So are you gonna put the moves on so and so?" Oh my and I'm god! I'm like, oh, first off, they're a senior, <laughs> so like that's just weird. Second off, no. <laughs> Like, I, mentioned, I mentioned them twice, and they were telling me, like, oh, you must be crushing on them. And I'm like, no, I just want to go hang out with this one. I've gotten, I've gotten the... I can't drive. I'm so happy you're dating reaction. It's like, what? 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 I'm not saying, what? I just love my friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I swear to God. Okay. All right, question. The platonic crushes. Yes. What are they? What are they? How are they different from queer platonic? So... Is it like the beforehand queer platonic? Um, not... Well, you don't have to want a queer platonic relationship with someone. Like, you could just be like... Should we explain, try to explain Yeah, we'll platonic. define yeah, that first. Explain yeah. it to me, because I'm confused. Um, can, may I? I Go for it. A shot. Okay, so basically, a lot of people tend to mistake it with romantic or, like, big platonic energy. <laughs> so... Big energy. Yeah, <laughs> but basically, it is like, say you had... Uh, someone and your queer platonic partner it's like you want to go live with them you want to have you might want to raise children it's not a requirement it's different for every relationship there's like, which is no requirements, requirements for yeah. all. and you, and you set great. your okay. you give your boundaries to each other it's like it's very interesting and it's not it's a lot of people met and like kind of yeah sorry yeah. I'm, I'm not going to it's one more ask question but I'm just super confused no, it's okay. It's it's just very specific to each relationship. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, t do the queer the platonic crushes and the queer platonic relationships are they similar things? Do they is it one like beforehand? Then like you have a crush and then it's assumed that you will eventually start dating. Yeah, but you don't have to either. Is it? Well, no, but, but yeah. like is. It's very different. different. She's like, what We're are all the differences, so what are the the differences between yeah. platonic attraction or platonic crushes and queer platonic relationships? I think there's is a that what you're asking? Um, kind of. deeper okay. level of commitment. Is the thing? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like a life. Because you can be friends with someone without being like, I'm going to live with you for my entire life. Would you live with me? Though. Probably not. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Would you live with me? I no? mean, sure. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> I got one. <laughs> Just get a giant house and live in the woods. It'll be fine. That's not cause, like a prime spot to be murdered. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> it's like a horror movie in the making, so what's not? But, but uh, no, I'm not gonna. Okay. So what makes queer platonic different from romantic? Um, it. Cause couldn't anything be defined as romantic as we discussed? Yeah, that's the thing. That's like the lines can be very blurred, and I think part of it is that if the people involved in the relationship feel it's necessary to like differentiate it from romantic mm -hmm. like by whatever standards they have for it okay. that's important and it's obviously important to them okay follow-up question have you ever seen a queer platonic relationship in media no <laughs> have you I don't believe so. You don't believe it's so? It's also a very new concept. Is but, it? Well, like new, like the like labels. The labels yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like not like yeah. a new thing that we invented. It's just- We just made it up. Yeah, it's just, um, yeah. It's just them, um, yeah? Like now it's a label <laughs> it's a that's sentence. actually being used and validated by people and it's something that's like talked about in terms of defining our relationships and maybe it's like, going to be more widely accepted or known about in the future. But. Mm -hmm. 
Because I feel like like asexuality is slowly starting to seep into, seep into media a little bit more. I have seen no aromantic. Yep. I'm sorry, it's guys. <laughs> I mean, it's just bad. bad. Representation. No, it's not, it's not your fault. It's <laughs> media. We can blame them for everything, but... um. We did this episode already. Yeah. We can talk about asexual and aromantic, so it's fine. This, this is media, though. This is media. Whoa! whoa. <laughs> Quality media. That's a... Whoa. <laughs> I'm not ready for this. Okay, anyway. We can become the representation. And that's kind of what we have to do that's, is the thing. I'll do it. I'll write a well, whole you, novel. That's the whole that point really of why we're here. Yeah, I'm, yeah, just, just, let's just write just a novel. Let's just all write a novel and just like put ourselves in it and be the representation. Yeah, the problem, I, I'll do it. I mean, the problem, like, that's actually, like, honestly a problem is that there's, like, so little representation yeah. for ace and arrow people that we have to make our own representation. Yeah. And, yeah. And also, if there's representation in the media, like, people are, like, Oh, like it doesn't really matter if there's like say there's one aromantic character in one show, like that's not gonna make a difference. No one cares. Just make them normal and like d don't go there. But it's like it I don't think people understand what a big difference having just even one character in one show, like in the media, it makes such a big difference. Like, especially in shows that like kids are watching or maybe parents are watching and then they see this and they're like oh so like my classmate or my friend or my kid who talked about like them being aromantic like that's what this means and like it's real and it's being validated mm -hmm. in the media so like it must mm -hmm. be real but also <laughs> for the love of god stop showing me nerdy quiet aces there are more than just nerdy quiet aces <laughs> Yeah, no, but sure. they're like it's socially like, awkward and uncomfortable the entire, and they don't and the, talk. And then they end up like, being why? fixed by the end of whatever. Like, or like, they're murderers. Fixed, one yeah. of the two. Yeah. Either one. Or both. Or yeah. both. I they're murderers like, who are then fixed. We need yeah. representation fixed. and we need it to fixed. start out being the right kind instead of it being like, here's some representation, but it's very stereotypical and actually completely wrong. Like, and they're like, are you happy now? I'm like, we no. need arrow ace people in like the meetings that are like going into developing these characters and like putting them in media so that it's accurate and so that we start off the right way because if you put a character who's like bad representation into a show like that just gives people the wrong idea and then just mm -hmm. develops like more stereotypes and more hesitation towards accepting people so we need it to be like the right media from the start you know what i want to see i want to see a poly queer platonic relationship that's what I want to see. That would be, yes, Make that it happen. Would be amazing. Let's do it. Be so, Let's do it. I'm going to yes. start slamming this chair. Just slam the chair until we get what we want. No. It'll okay. work. I can't clap because it's too loud. You can't. Please don't break the microphone. It's already broken. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's fine. I think that's about it, right? Did we? Yeah. Yeah. So, any do final thoughts? Do we want to do, like, any kind of... Recap. Yeah, any final thoughts from you guys? Any final, do we want a specific recap question mm -hmm. or just you go for it? Do you want to make so a like specific take away? Question? Just like what you want people to take away from this. Name and start. Um, you, <laughs> romance and sex is not a requirement for a happy life. <laughs> Everything is fluid. <laughs> Your turn. Um, everything's individual and attractions don't line up always. Uh, that was pretty I think like, all of those things. Um, yeah. Wait, um, yeah. I, wait, I, Good rap. I, I, one I, more thing. I, I, oh, my. Oh, my. I'm, Piper, I got you, buddy. Thanks. So, like, if you experience some attraction and people are pressuring you to act on it, like, oh, don't. You awesome. tell them to screw off. Like, if you want to act on that it, advice, like, don't do that. If you want to act on it, that's fine. But if you don't and you just want to, like, enjoy the attraction for what it is, it's just, just as valid. Yeah. Go for it. Because, like, it can be fun. You don't need to be in, like, or a, soul crushing. Or soul crushing, but mostly fun. Like, <laughs> you. You. <laughs> You don't need to spend all your time like pining after someone just because someone's telling you you have to feel like that. If you feel like that, that's fine, but like you don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, just pick a random I guy. Think, I think the biggest thing is definitely don't let other people tell you or force you. Yeah, you know you, you better yeah, than they know you. Listen to yourself. Don't. Yes, exactly. Don't be in, crushed inside that little box. Don't be crushed into a box in the community that isn't supposed to have boxes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so. So this has been All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.